I've been given this old TRX250 which had uh, major engine problems. The owner took it to the motorbike shop. They stripped it down, took it apart and said it wasn't really worth fixing. All the parts are here in the boxes. So I'm going to make it into an electric quad bike using one of these hub motors on each wheel uh, on the rear end. And I'll make a new rear end for it because I don't need that diff. One of the motors has actually stopped working. I've narrowed it down to this motor, which is the one that had the cable twisted up uh, before I got it. Right, we've found a few problems with the stator, mainly with the hall sensors. One of the wires had come off this one. The other set, one of them is faulty, so both sets of hall sensors aren't working. That's why uh, the motor stopped running. Um, I can't find any in New Zealand, and they're going to take about a month to arrive. I've ordered those, we'll just have to wait till those arrive. Right, all the parts have arrived to fix the hub motor. The hall sensors, which go in there. Um, I think a couple of them are blown. So first thing to do is get those old hall sensors out, they're glued in there. Um, so I have to pick all the glue out of there and mount the new ones, wire it all together, wire the main cables to here. We took all those out because they were twisted in the hub from the previous owner, uh, because these are second hand. The previous owner had let the um, shaft spin inside the mounting and it had wound up all the leads, so that's what's caused the fault. So we'll replace all the leads in there, reroute everything and should be good to go again hopefully. And I also got a new bearing for the hub, um, so I'll put that in. This one was a bit rumbly. Alright, that's looking pretty clean. I'm just using a little screwdriver to dig out the glue. pretty good. There's a, there's a little bit of rust in there too, um, but that should be all right. Um, it's kind of a tapered shape and the numbers have to go at the top. That's a good fit. I'll use JB Weld to glue that in there. Some people use super glue but um, it can break down if the motor gets up to a, a high temperature. JB Weld can handle um, quite high temperatures so I'll just use that. I should really be using a static strap, but I don't have one on me. But um, I've got a few spares and I'll just keep testing as I go. Sitting pretty good, I think. So they're as far up as they can go. Basically flush with the uh, stator edge.
Okay, I'll test all those leads and make sure all the halls are putting up the same reading. Yep, they all look pretty good. Okay, all the readings of the hall sensors look pretty similar, so I'll wire those all together. one side done. Right we'll test all those leads, make sure there's no breaks in the wires. Yep. Yep that looks good. Right, I'll crimp these main motor wires on, just using these uh, crimp sleeves. Right, that's pretty much ready to put back together, but I'll just test the hall sensors before I go any further, make sure there's no problems. That's good. All good on that one. Perfect. Right, they are all good, so the hall sensors seem to be working. 
Um, we can put everything back together now. So I'll just go around and clean up this mating surface. Get any um, corrosion and old sealant off there. Bearing in there. I'm just working in town. I don't have my press here, so I'm going to have to do this the old fashioned way. Make sure there's no pieces of metal in there because I don't want it rubbing between the magnets and the stator. So just go around and pull any little pieces out. Some of these bolts that I took out have a bit of corrosion in them, so I'll just give them a quick going over with the wire brush. Right now, I've got to put the stator inside there. It's gonna, the magnets are gonna pull it in quite hard, I think. So I'll just have to get my fingers out of the way. Might just put a little bit of padding behind the, behind it, so that, um, so it doesn't slam down too hard. That's spinning nice and freely. I can't hear any rubbing in there, so we'll tighten everything up and should be good to go, hopefully. It's feeling smoother than ever. Better than it was before actually with that new bearing. So that's good. No rubbing noises in there. Sounds okay. Sounding all right. Nice. 
Oh well, seems to have fixed it. That's sounding a lot better than it was before. Seems like we've solved the problem. Awesome. Right, I've got another problem. I uh, put everything back together, uh, went for a quick ride, and the hub motor stopped working again. I've traced it back to the controller, so I've pulled it apart and found this uh, looks like a blown capacitor. The flux capacitor! Flux capacitor! And also there's a there's, there was a nut floating around inside. So that might have been the original cause of the uh, hall sensor issue. Um, and you can see there's a bolt in there as well, jammed in between the capacitors. That's not ideal. So I got hold of Kelly controllers, they were quite helpful, um, but they, they don't have any spare parts for this one because it's, it's over a decade old. Kelly sent me the flash files to, uh, to try and reflash the chip, but unfortunately I can't get it to uh, to go through, so yeah, it's, it's pretty much bricked. Uh, so I've only got one good controller now. I'm going to hook the hub motor that I've repaired up to the good controller and give it a good test, uh, just one wheel drive and uh, see how it holds up. And if it's all good I'll order some new controllers and try and get try and get it back to two wheel drive again. So yeah I've had a bit of trouble with, with the project. It, it started off pretty well, everything was going fine and then that motor died and then we lost the controller so yeah. The only thing I haven't had trouble with is the battery so far. They are decent batteries. I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to uh, check these out at bigbattery.com. <laughs>